Hello, everyone. My name is John Ertl of The Ohio State University, uh, and thank you for coming to my presentation today. Uh, I'm going to be talking to you about uh, flowering delays that occur in grafted and non-grafted watermelon seedlings during simulated long-distance transportation. So grafting is a unique agrotechnology in which uh, a crop of interest called the scion uh, is, uh, has its root system removed and then is uh, actually uh, cut and uh, essentially spliced together with another plant to take advantage of that plant's root system. The secondary plant, the rootstock, often supplies some kind of benefit to the scion. Uh, and so they're able to be treated as one plant uh, after healing and then can be transplanted into a field or a production system uh, for growth. Um, grafting is typically done to prevent soilborne disease. So we can see on the left here, a field infested with Fusarium wilt. On the right is the non-grafted plant, uh, clearly performing poorly in this field, affected by the disease. On the left uh, is the grafted variety onto a uh, resistant rootstock in which the plant is exhibiting normal growth. Another reason uh, to uh, graft plants is often for increased yield. Uh, and so while a typical uh, plant in the same field in Arizona uh, for watermelon will produce about 3.3 kilograms per meter squared, um, a grafted plant can, uh, grafted plants can produce uh, up to 97% or 139% more yield over the course of the season. Uh, and so this is a, a big reason why grafting has been adopted in uh, recent history. So uh, in North America, this has been uh, more recent acquisitions since the early 2000s, um, and there are still limited high volume nurseries throughout the entire continent, but specifically the USA has begun a lot more production recently. Um, typically they want to import plants from Canada or Mexico due to the limitation of the number of grafting nurseries present in the US. Um, however, uh, that requires long distance transportation, uh, and this is where the issue stems from, but Canada exports almost 40% of all of their grafting plants to the US via long distance transport uh, to supply the US market. So here's just an example of where the risk can occur. So if you're uh, uh, shipping these plants during winter months to transplant into warmer climates, um, you may be shipping from a Canadian nursery over a three to five day period, up to two thirds of which may not have climate control on board, in which case you're exposing these plants directly to very, very low temperatures uh, during transport. Um, and then the seedlings will arrive in a better environment and be transplanted. So while plants initially may look like the bottom left-hand quarter photo, uh, where they're healthy and robust, um, they can suffer from uh, low temperature damage, uh, chilling stress that uh, causes wilting, necrosis, and other issues that may impact the seedling quality and then the post-transplanting uh, rate of development. So grafting is, Typically done to, uh, it has been known to increase abiotic stress tolerance. So we hypothesized, first of all, that grafting might be able to improve chilling tolerance uh, of these seedlings. Further, that delays in growth and development post-transplant likely increase with the accumulation of what we call chilling degree hours, which is somewhat akin to like how growing degree days is calculated, but essentially the temperature um, multiplied by the length of uh, time, the duration that it's under that temperature can be converted into a chilling degree hour unit. And the accumulation of those units uh, causes increased uh, developmental delays. Uh, and then finally, uh, that we can likely find an appropriate temperature for transportation based on data that we generate by doing experiments here uh, and exposing these plants to low temperatures. So in the literature, watermelon is generally the most chilling sensitive uh, of the cucurbit uh, uh, species of the cucurbit family. And then uh, among those plants that are commonly grafted, it is uh, the most sensitive. So somewhere between 10 to 15 degrees Celsius is where chilling stress begins to occur for these plants. Uh, and specifically 12 degrees Celsius was found to be a safe storage temperature uh, for long-term storage of these plants that does not reduce transplant quality. So we're using that as a reference through our experiments um, as a point of which these uh, plants are able to maintain quality. So the method for actually doing this experiment was First, we would grow these seedlings and graft them, then subject them to a 72-hour transportation simulation. This one that we, we did was with one degree Celsius chilling to follow up on a previous study where we found that these plants did not have any developmental issues with 48 hours of three degree Celsius chilling within that 72-hour simulation. And then we're going to, we have taken these plants and then transplanted them and then grown them to maturity to assess their vegetative and reproductive development. So we used a watermelon cultivar, Tri-X313, uh, as a commonly used in the industry, and then 
Half of all of those plants were grafted onto strong Tosa hybrid squash rootstocks. Um, the other half remained uh, non-grafted to compare those two. Uh, we measured, uh, first of all, seedling damage and then a chlorophyll fluorescence measurement with FBFM, which is the maximal possible um, photosynthetic uh, ability of these plants to actually capture and harvest light energy. Um, and then also we looked at vegetative and reproductive development after transplanting. So the experiment was organized in the following way. We had between zero and 48 hours of one degree Celsius chilling, followed by 12 degrees Celsius storage for the remainder of the 72 hour period. So the initial one was 48 hours at 1C, followed by 24 hours at 12, and then we had 24 hours at 1C, 12, 6, and then no uh, acute chilling stress at all. Moving into the results here, we, uh, if we look at seedling damage, the percent of leaf area that was directly damaged or expressing necrotic or chlorotic tissue formation or wilting as seen in the photos below, uh, increased, this damage increased with the uh, increased duration of exposure to one degree Celsius. Uh, this, there's a rather linear increase, but in grafted plants did uh, present more damage than non-grafted plants, mostly due to, likely, most likely due to the fact that they had gone through uh, the healing process, which is a stressful period just two weeks prior. And we look at the uh, chlorophyll fluorescence, FBFM, um, their ability to harvest light energy decreased by up to 10% with 48 hours of one degree Celsius chilling. Uh, and this was a linear relationship that existed for both grafted and non-grafted plants. When we look at reproductive growth in the days from transplant to the first female flower developed on the plant. Um, as duration increased, uh, grafted and non-grafted plants also increased in the number of days from transplant to the first flower being pushed, um, in which case grafted plants were delayed up to 3.2 days for the first female flower and non-grafted plants up to 7.2 days. Male flowers had a similar result with grafted plants delayed up to 5.3 days and non-grafted up to 6.2 days. Now, when we look at uh, why this chilling stress is affecting reproductive development, um, we wanted to look at a little bit of the physiology of the plant's uh, development. So on the left here, we can see the, uh, the plant in an early stage uh, with a forming flower bud. Uh, typically, these flower buds form on the plant within four to six weeks of, uh, or actually as few as four weeks after um, uh, their germination. And so these are 25-day-old seedlings where you can clearly see uh, male flower parts. So these rounded structures are actually anthers that are in development. Um, and when we Post after transplant, we looked at vegetative growth. We found that there was no direct effect of vegeta on uh, delays in vegetative growth due to chilling, meaning that chilling uh, didn't delay vegetative growth, that in turn delayed reproductive growth. Instead, it directly affected reproductive development during that seedling stage. However, we don't really know a lot of information about uh, chilling stress in the reproductive stages, different reproductive stages for cucurbits. For other species like strawberry, um, we, uh, it's well known that of, of the several stages of development, several are highly susceptible to chilling and others, um, when exposed to the same chilling stress, do not uh, delay flower development whatsoever. Um, and so this is an interesting area that uh, we, is not well understood yet. Um, but we think that high temperatures and light intensities might be key, especially because uh, during the uh, seedling growth period, higher temperatures and light might harden seedlings and advance flower stages to a less susceptible chilling stage. And then after transplant, um, if the environment is optimal, it might advance growth quickly enough that you mitigate any possible delays in flower development. So we came up with a hypothesis that chilling stress might be a, a cumulative response, um, in which case here we're just I'm using this data as a model, but essentially this is a base, a post harvest basil and uh, on the y-axis is an injury score, uh, and on the x-axis is the number of days it was in storage. And it was stored for different, uh, different temperatures for uh, different durations. And you can see that the loss in quality or the increasing uh, y-axis um, occurred diff uh, more rapidly with lower temperatures. Uh, so we uh, wanted to mimic or change this data into something that was more uh, comparable. So we looked at chilling degree hours. So in this case, 10 degrees Celsius didn't cause any uh, damage over a period of five days. So we uh, took that as a base temperature that was considered safe. 
Um, and then we converted all this data into uh, using this equation um, for chilling degree hours in which uh, each uh, degree away from 10 generated one chilling degree hour. So if we were looking at uh, five degrees Celsius storage, it would accumulate five chilling degree hours per hour or zero degrees Celsius storage would accumulate 10, 10 chilling degree hours per hour. What we found was that if we picked any point on this, uh, on this relationship graph, uh, we could, find, we could uh, reach the same number of chilling degree hours with different combinations of duration and temperature. So we thought a similar relationship likely exists for watermelon um, and its uh, delay in reproductive development. So we conducted a follow-up experiment. Uh, we used only non-grafted watermelon to prevent any kind of rootstock interactions that might occur. And then we looked at different durations and temperatures and calculated chilling degree hours with these safe base temperatures between three and 15 degrees Celsius. Um, what we did with this data was then uh, found the most significant result uh, for each of those calculations and then applied it to the data set. So in this case, we found that the best base temperature to look at female flower development and delay was actually at four degrees Celsius. So while we had mixed chilling durations and temperatures, um, we could get a linear relationship by looking uh, at the CDH calculations at four degrees C. And so uh, female flowering was delayed approximately 1.3 days with the accumulation of every 50 chilling degree hours at a base temperature of four. So we wanna look at whether or not this base temperature of four was appropriate for this kind of data set and whether it applies to other data sets. And so um, we pulled um, some data from uh, external sources. So this is a publication from 2001 in which um, two degrees Celsius chilling was applied to watermelon seedlings for up to 81 hours and then transplanted into the field. When they looked at the number of days to first female flower over a two-year period, they found a linear increase with the increased, duration, the increased number of days to flower as the uh, length of chilling increased. So we wanted to look at, at uh, our data versus theirs. So the blue line here is the CDH4 calculation for a mixed chilling trial. And then we uh, on the top is the um, top and bottom are the one degree Celsius uh, data where there's delayed female flowering. And then this is the data from uh, Cork Mass in the fall of 2001, where we have really a close match between how our model worked and how predictive it was for not only our own data that we did, we did previously, but also uh, external data. And so this confirms that four degrees Celsius is about a temperature that, that causes a lot of uh, developmental delays and reproductive development. So while we know that watermelon can suffer from seedling damage and reduction in chlorophyll fluorescence, these things don't delay vegetative growth that then delays reproductive development. Instead, reproductive development is directly delayed in the seedling stage when chilling stress is applied. And that long distance transportation of these plants should target temperatures above four degrees Celsius to maintain the highest possible seedling quality. Um, and we should take, uh, these transporters should take uh, action in case in the case that there are type low temperatures experienced uh, and limit the accumulation of more than 50 chilling degree hours um, in which case uh, that would mean uh, temperatures below four degrees celsius uh, and so this is a uh, not only you know a, a good way to maintain seedling quality and preserve uh, these uh, seedlings for post-transplanting development but this is also a method in which you could save cost as you only have to heat the trailer to be just above four degrees Celsius, uh, especially when you're going through uh, much colder environments. So um, I just wanted to acknowledge uh, not only ASHS, but uh, also Ohio State and uh, my funding sources. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to take any questions you have. So if you'd like to reach out to me, you are welcome to. And uh, thank you so much for coming to my presentation today.